Hi, I've gotten a lot of questions about the electrical layout of the van, the parts that all come together, so I wanted to give a quick video just to show how it is um, configured. The solar power comes from above. The wires are covered by the tailgate when the tailgate is closed. It goes in through the tail light and then comes out here. And so this is a break in the plastic naturally, so when I take the solar wires out later, they could, it would easily snap together without damage. This is a solar charge controller and a voltmeter for the marine batteries below, the deep, cell ba deep cycle batteries. This is a remote start for the inverter. The wiring from that all comes down together and is joined by the wiring from the uh, car's alternator. That goes underneath the flooring so you can't see it anywhere else except for here. And then all of that goes into the, um, the batteries. So there is a battery charger external here and I have the plug for that running underneath this wall on this side so that I can plug it in. Right now it's plugged into my house, but that would also be plugged into like a standard outlet in a, in a campground. The battery isolator is what stops me from running the car battery too low because they, um, the, the power is shared from the car battery down to these batteries, but if it, um, so that it doesn't risk running the car battery too low, this will um, stop the flow if I get too low on those. So um, the three batteries are wired together this way. There is hard wiring for the um, refrigerator going straight from the batteries and it runs behind the cabinetry so that uh, the refrigerator stays plugged in all the time. And then the power plugs for things like lighting and charging stations and stuff like that are also directly powered into the batteries. So uh, the inverter, which is right now sitting on the floorboard just because I've taken out the cover that normally goes over these batteries, the inverter is a 2200 watt pure sine wave inverter. Um, the, the batteries themselves are protected by uh, a piece of flooring that I put over here. There's still some natural venting because I don't close it in in the front and also it's not closed in on the sides. Um, and then I need some airflow also for the battery charger so that it gets airflow behind and in front of it. I do have a 200 amp circuit breaker so that I don't run the risk of um, causing any charges or starting any fires if there's a, a major influx of power. And then also because I have that flooring that covers the terminals, it stops the risk of having any sparks or anything like that from any contacts from above hit. Um, there's silicone tape on all the contacts and then this is just a, an extra just piece of measure. It's just a little piece of duct tape just so in case I ever dropped anything metal, I didn't want it to have anything connect. But generally speaking, this whole thing is covered. Um, I do have to take it off from time to time just to check the water level on the batteries. Um, and also, if I ever wanted to change out a component, component or get a closer look about what's something going on, I can take a look that way. Of course, the batteries at some point in their future, after many, many cycles, will have to be replaced. So uh, you never want to make that too permanent. This, um, this piece of wood is actually goes here. It's a, a flooring for a shelf. So normally, this would be installed. I oh, hope the screw doesn't fall there so that it's a little bit of storage for the underneath the bed and also get one more protective measure for everything going on underneath. So in a moment I'll reinstall the floor and then show everyone kind of how it looks once that part is back on.